Hello. In this session, we will talk about the basic syntax or the basic structure uh, that we will be using when we are writing the Terraform code. All right. So the basic syntax as to how you can write the code, what are the different components we have when we are writing the Terraform code. But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So let's get started. So the Terraform language, so whatever the code that you are writing, the syntax, we call that as your HCL. So HCL it stands for HashiCorp configuration language. And uh, this is what we use when you're writing the Terraform code, the configuration files to create our infrastructure. So the constructs in the Terraform language can also be expressed in the JSON syntax. So by default, we use this HCL, but you also have the option of using the JSON. If you're comfortable with JSON, you can make use of the JSON syntax as well. However, it can be a little difficult for us to read and write the code in the JSON format. Uh, it is not necessary that you should be knowing all the details of the syntax of how, how you should be writing the Terraform code. However, there are some important details that we should know when we are uh, writing the code in the Terraform. So the first thing we should be knowing about is the arguments and blocks. So the Terraform language syntax is built around two key syntax constructs. One is the arguments and the other is the blocks. We'll first talk, up, talk about the arguments. So the argument can be used, so you can, we can think of it as a variable where we have a variable name and then we can assign a value to that. For example, here if you see, I have defined my resource block. So whatever you see on the left hand side, so this instance underscore type and AMI, that's the argument name. On the right hand side, whatever we have, that's the argument value. So whenever we are defining the resource block or the provider block, we make use of these arguments to define the key and the value. So the identifier before this equals sign, we call that as your argument name and the expression after the equal sign, we call that as your arguments value. So the context where this argument appears, it uh, totally depends on your resource type. So depending on the resource type, we will be using the respective argument names and the values to create those resource. Then we have your blocks. So the next uh, main component we have is your blocks. So now this block is where we um, specify as to what resource type we want to create and then all the other information that we want to provide. So here the block type that you see. So here I'm telling I'm creating a resource block. Likewise, uh, we also have your provider block. Then we have a module block. We have a data block. So we have lots of different different types of blocks. And this is what we used to specify as to what uh, type of block we are going to use. And then here we have the labels. All right. So here AWS underscore instance uh, example underscore instance. We call that as the labels. So the block has a type. So in this case resource and each block type defines how many labels follow the type keyword. So depending on the block type, the number of labels will be decided. So if you're going with the resource block, we can use only two labels. One is your uh, resource type and the local label name. All right. So the resource block type expects two labels, like I mentioned. So one is your AWS underscore instance and example in this case. All right. Now, the particular block type may have any number of required labels or it may require none depending on the block type. All right. So these are your arguments on, and the blocks. Now, once you're done defining the block type, then comes your a body as to what all arguments you're going to pass within the block type. So in this case, if you see here, we, we are using these curly braces, which are your delimiter. So this is where inside this curly braces, we give the body as to what exactly uh, arguments you want to pass to create the resources. So here, if you see, we are passing this couple of arguments. One is the instance underscore type and the AMI and then the respective values. So within the block body for the arguments and blocks may be nested creating a hierarchy of blocks and their associated arguments. Then comes your identifiers, all right? So we have arguments, we have blocks, and then next we have the identifiers. So argument names, block type names, and the names of the most Terraform specific construct like resources, input variables, etc. All of these, we call them as identifiers. So here, 
the resource sorry there's a typo uh, the resource in this in instance underscore type ami all these are identifiers so these are specific to terraform and you have to make sure you're using the same identifiers to create the um, uh, components all right so identifiers can contain letters digits underscores and hyphens the first character of an identifier must not be a digit to avoid ambiguity with literal numbers the next component we have is your comments all right so we also have the option of uh, providing comments in the uh, terraform code so the terraform language supports three different syntaxes for comments all right so here let's say for example this is the terraform code we have so we can use the hash to indicate a single line comment so here you can see this one so we have hash at the beginning of the line all right which indicates that this is a comment all right we can also use double slash to indicate the single line comment so here you can see we can also use this to indicate a single line comment so we can either use hash or we can use double slash to indicate a comment now if you have multiple lines that needs to be commented then we can use slash star at the beginning and at the end we can use star slash which indicates a multi line comment so if you want to like comment out multiple lines at the same time then we can simply use slash star at the beginning and at the end star slash and terraform understands that we want to comment out multiple lines next component we have is your character encoding and line endings so terraform configuration files must always be utf8 encoded while the delimiters of the language are all ascii characters terraform accepts non ascii characters in identifiers comments and string values terraform accepts configuration files with either unix style line endings like line feed only so lf it stands for line feed or windows style line endings cr with line feed so that's like control line feed but the um, idiomatic style is to use the unix convention and so automatic configuration formatting tools may automatically transform cr lf endings to lf so these are the different different components that we have uh, when we talk about the basic syntax in terraform and these are the components that you should be knowing uh, before you start writing the terraform code so once again we have the arguments we have blocks we have identifiers we have the comments and then we have the character encodings that's all for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you like the video leave a like and please share the video